Hello, good afternoon. I uh, hope everyone's well. That was a bit of a false start there. I was trying to stream and I hadn't actually gone to um, stream on YouTube. So I go through all of my usual checks. Hopefully everything's working okay. I basically... Yeah, everything seems fine there. I, what I actually managed to do, um, I managed to go to streaming on... Uh, OBS Studio, because that's what I use for streaming is OBS Studio, and I've forgotten to um, actually start the live stream on YouTube, so yeah, so I'm not sure if that first little bit came up or not, but apologies for the false start if it did, and uh, we're, we're uh, carving, and we're live, and we're ready to go, so what we're, uh, what we're working on, um, we got a love spoon, this is something that's a little bit more standard. So this would be more of a standard love spoon. And this is known as Flowers for My Sweetheart. So for those of you not familiar with our online shop, which probably is, is most of you because you wouldn't really need to go into our like, online shop. What we do is we have a name and a description for each of our spoons. Um, no kidding, no worries, hello all, hello. Yeah, we, I, uh, you'll have to let me know. Did we have a false start there? Because um, I think I started, I pressed, I had a, a few, we call them a few technical problems. So that's what we leave it at. It was a few tom, uh, technical problems. Thomas Woodcarver just walked in. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, we couldn't find the leak. There we are, so. You won't get a dust cap on it though, Dave. Um, the... So we, we've we've sent him in to sort out the car, and I'm thinking they they, they didn't do anything. Couldn't find the leak. Couldn't find the air coming out anywhere. Right, it's but it's, it's got losing no pressure. Just cap on it. The, the little yeah yeah did there we are. So uh, we'll have to take the car back in for another go. Right, so um, we're working on as we mentioned a flowers for my sweetheart love spoon. I'm in a piece of oak with Jerry Clark. Hello, thank you for joining us. I just got the notification about one minute ago. Yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a false start. Um, so it gives you an idea basically of what we would be doing then on a like a daily basis. We again mark the grain out with a vertical grain. So we've got that grain running in a vertical direction, and then we basically cut, um, we're cutting the grain of the wood. We're, we're doing our stop cuts and cutting into the wood, working with the grain as much as possible. Now this is gonna be a little bit different because as you can see from the medullary ray, it's a little bit diagonal. So that's not ideal. Ideally, we would like to have a nice straight grain, but we're working wood that we reclaim from old furniture and old buildings so that's not always possible um so yeah it's it's uh, it's basically it's one of those one of those things with it so we do our stop cut and then we do all of that shaping as as we're going along um and we're working on the bell then so we've got the clapper on the bottom so again, we get start off by getting the depth, cutting down into the wood as far as we want to, and then afterwards we're shaping it. How thick is the stock? So the wood, this one here, how thick is the stock? Yeah, basically, what are we working on there? It's roughly a little bit over half an inch um, in centimeters about one and a half centimeters, somewhere around that. So depending on whether you're working in metric or imperial, yeah, that, that's the sort of two thicknesses then that we're working in. Tommy's Workshop, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Thank you for joining us. Apologies if you uh, you also uh, were here for our false start, but we've managed to get it right this second time round. So what what we're doing here, we're looking to replenish the stock for our internet, our online shop. 
And that's what happens at different times then, if we're a bit busier, you start selling the spoons online and then we're, we're replacing them. We, if you're sort of interested in doing online sales and things like that, what we do, we only actually offer them in two different woods. We offer them in mahogany and oak. And the reason for that is that it's fairly reliable in terms of having that consistency, having the consistency in the colour of the wood itself. Um, so that's basically, yeah, that's that's what we do. This one here, as I said, a little bit of a tricky grain because it's going diagonally. It's been taken, this piece of wood, probably from a piece of furniture. And um, so far, it's carving okay. But we're trying to find the, the best sort of direction and, and method to, to, to work it in. So yeah, I'm intrigued now with the, with the car. How did, they, how did they check the tire? Well, you put it in the water. Yeah. In a bath of water, no, no air came out of it. Yeah. Um, there we are. We're gonna have to, we will have to investigate because every week what you see I'm pumping that, that tire up. It may have been grit in the valve. Right, yeah. Well, every well, every week I'm pumping it up. The valve hasn't got any. So we're having. got a dust cap on it. We're having. Um, yeah, the, the valve, I must have forgotten to put it back on this morning. Right, Because well, it, it was on there until this morning. Where would that valve be? Where would that cap be now? Wherever it, it was after I was pumping it up. So here we go. It's gone from the Love Spoon Workshop to the. The car trials and tribulations of the Love Spoon Workshop. So we're uh, we're having a few problems. This is this tire has proved to be my nemesis for the last Monday. You see, is always a good last day. two years. I've been having the same tire, and I've had it changed once last year, and I've been losing pressure out of this tire for the last two years. So any thoughts would be uh, much appreciated. Thank you for the teaching, love you. Ah, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for the support in the uh, YouTube channel. So you may notice with this bit here on the bell, I actually turned it round in the vise. So we turned it round and carved it in the opposite direction. So what we're always doing, we're looking for um, the correct way to work the grain. So I started off trying to carve it that way and I was getting some resistance from the grain and so, um, yeah, it wasn't working, so we had to turn it around and then carve it back in the opposite direction. So we've got the depth on the clappers as well. We changed the size of gouge. So we're using a smaller gouge now to just shape the bottom of the, uh, of the clappers on, our, on the bell. Now they'll give you an insight as well in terms of what's happening. Shop talk all the way. <laughs> yeah, it is basically, as I said, this tire, I must have, how much time have I spent on this, on this tire? I must have pumped it up. On average, I'm pumping that tire up once a week for the last year. Well, it's definitely become tiresome, I know that much. Yeah. And so the garage reckon that it's not losing, uh, not losing air. I don't know what's going on there, because it definitely is. Let's have a little look. So we, yeah, you'll notice there as well, I just slipped, so that happens as well. It's just something that occasionally happens. I just slipped and caught that, but all I do is where I've gone into the wood here, I've just gone back over it with that little gouge just to take out the nick that that will have created. Give you an idea of different things we're working on. Uh, we've actually been doing some new ideas for, um, uh, videos, some new scroll saw projects, that sort of thing. They'll be coming up on the channel later in the year. So we're always adding, as you know, new videos and new ideas. I'm also, that you can see they're just taking some, there's a little line just left from the scroll saw. It's just if you have a blade, sometimes this burns a little bit. So we're just carving that out there. You won't be able to see it from that camera angle, but that's what I'm working on. With the way we do the bell as well, I also shape the bottom part the other way, just a little bit, just like so. 
and the same on the other side just like so there we are and then we're going to do a little bit what we sort of do we bevel the edges on the inside of the surround so that's what we're going to that's what we're going to work on just the bevel the edges just to shape around this surround so the reason then this love one's called flowers from my sweetheart is that the main feature we're going to have the bells we're going to have the heart and then below we're going to have that flower facing forward in the design so that's the main sort of feature of this particular design it's a popular love spoon that we make and the main occasions then that this would be used to celebrate would be weddings and anniversaries uh, Jim H, hi folks, hello, thank you for joining us. Um, <clears throat> yeah, great to have you all with us. Thank you for all joining us and uh, hopefully it proves useful. Actually, that spoon there, that design is, is, is a real sort of, uh, it, it's a really nice one. Anybody interested in pursuing the love spoons, that's an excellent design because um, the size of it then, it, you know, it, it's quite sort of, quite impressive, um, and... It's a slightly larger spoon, isn't it? How much does it sell for, Lee? Or should oh. I, shouldn't I ask you that? No, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it's on the website for. I would have, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. I don't want to answer that because it'll, it's on our website and I don't want to get the okay, pricing wrong. It's one of the more expensive spoons that we've got on the site, although we have got spoons that are more. I would say it's about the third or fourth most expensive, other than our collector's corner. So we've got, for instance, we've got our Cymru Ambith spoon. That would be a bit more expensive. Um, what else? Cymru Ambith. We, it's in a similar price bracket to the... We've got a design there with an anchor. And of course, the anchor is a traditional symbol. But it's a good example as well for how we tell stories through our spoon. You know, why is it called flowers from my sweetheart? I mean, one meaning that we put on the use of a flower on a love spoon is that you hope that love will blossom or continue to blossom. So that's, a, that's an idea that um, is quite often put into a, uh, a love spoon design or into our love spoon designs anyway so it, again it has a little story it has a little message to tell and the other symbols then you've got the hearts so the two hearts side by side so it's the two hearts together and then the bells for the peel for the celebration so that's what we're doing all the time through our work we tell stories we tell messages storytelling is a big part of what we do interestingly then um, yesterday, it was a lot of rain here, it was very, very wet, and in the workshop, I think obviously a bit more moisture in the atmosphere, as I'm going across there, there's just a little bit, it's leaving a little bit of a dirty finish, and that's just a sign that that moisture has, has just got onto the gouges, and just caused a little bit of... It's just causing it just to discolour because I will check with Dad if he's actually sharpened the gouges, but I don't think so. And then it may be a bit of honing paste. I think that's just a little bit. Have you sharpened the gouges? No. No. What is that? I'll, I'll ask yourself for a second opinion on that. I think it's just a little bit of corrosion where it was very damp yesterday. You can see that little bit of black coming oh, off on yeah. the gouges. That little bit of corrosion yeah, where the, the moisture gets into yesterday. it. It, it was, oh, it was like a swamp, you I'm afraid. Um, and it, it just, when you get that, it's just, it's nothing, because our gouges are in daily use, doesn't make any difference to them, but it's a little bit of corrosion, I would have yeah, thought, then, isn't yeah, it? It's a bit of oxida oxidation, do they call yeah, it? Yeah. So on, the, the, on the price of that one, Dave, yeah. I find this interesting, actually. That is, this is the interesting thing. Now, that's priced at £67.50. Okay. Okay. Plus, of course, postage. Postage on top. Purchasing from the workshop, that's the price. And that includes two initials carved inside the hearts. 
Thomas Woodcock was trying to sell everyone a love spoon. Yeah, but it's, you know, it's interesting for anybody in the trade. Yeah. And, you know, thinking about selling and all the rest of it. Yeah. If, you know, depending on which country it goes to, obviously, postage would, would vary. Yeah. I mean, we would say, right, 67.50 in UK plus 199 postage. All right? So in the, I'm just working out as well, because I know we have a, a fair few... Uh, people who support us in the US. So in dollars, what are we talking about? Eighty-five, ninety dollars, possibly somewhere around there. But the 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 fascinating. I mean, I I do you know in business here since nineteen seventy-five. Yeah. And pricing is it it never ceases ceases to sort of amaze me because never um, easy to get right. Well, it's it's you see furniture in the shop. Um, uh, whatever you see being sold, they put. If, it, if it's ten pounds, they don't say ten pounds. They say nine ninety nine. Yeah. Okay. So in this case, it's sixty seven fifty plus your postage. Yeah. It's one ninety nine postage. Just say two pounds to make it easy. So that would be going out at sixty seven fifty sixty nine forty nine. Yeah. But you're still under the seventy pounds benchmark. Yeah. So if you said to somebody, um, oh, it's it's seventy pounds, right? Psychologically, it's weird. It sounds a lot more than sixty-seven pound fifty. Yeah. And and it, and it's it's true for anybody that is pricing anything. Well, I think you you you've sort of um, you've 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 talked us into an interesting area that w it would be quite interesting to discuss. Um, because we do certain things online when it comes to pricing that, yeah, you, you have to do sort of things psychologically in terms of your pricing. So if any of you are, you know, selling online, there's certain things to think of. Because, for instance, one of the things that we're always debating is, is the level of postage. So that price of 67.50 also covers part of the postage. Yeah. So that isn't that isn't the price of the love spoon because what it is psychologically, if we put our price for UK postage up to, for instance, I don't know five pounds, so that would cover first class post or using a courier plus packaging. If we put it up to that price, people look and go, oh, I'm not paying five pounds for postage, yeah. but. That is the truth of what it sort of costs to do. Um, there is an art of pricing. Yes, yeah, spot on. Completely agree with that from the yeah. carver. Where they said, and, and this is the thing where when it comes to postage, you've got to think. So, for instance, now, our postage to the US is, um, I think it's £4.99. £4 yeah. yeah. Now, in reality, some of the things that we've sent to the US have cost us £30. Yeah. But if we started putting our price of postage to the US as £30, we'd never sell anything to the US. Um, so it, it's, it, you have to then build into, you have to work backwards in some ways, don't you? You have to work out, this is how much it's going to cost us to pack and send. And basically, we do also work on the principle that sometimes, sometimes you, you, you win some, you lose some. You know, so <laughs> we don't always get it right, but you but, just you just have to accept it, and uh, and you always learn as you as you're going yeah. along with it. We got one at the moment um, sitting in customs in Cyprus, and yeah. through no fault of our own, through yeah. no fault of the UK um, posted postage service, through no fault of the customer. But it could it's be entirely down to not, it customs could in be Cyprus. A political. Because, it could be politics, yeah. Because of because uh, the UK have come out of the European Union. Yeah. The, the, what we're finding is that well, some countries office, are being more difficult. Yeah. This is what the post office told us. Some countries in Europe are being more difficult than others when it comes to postage. But yeah, I think that we're sort of getting on to an interesting area where, when it comes to like the website and how we built the website, we do very much take into consideration aspects of psychology you know we put it out there there we are you're you've joined us to the live stream what what 
what what are your when you're buying online is the cost of postage shipping is shipping a, a big consideration for yourself i know it is for me because if i see something and i think oh that's expensive for shipping then straight away it sort of turns me off and um i sort of think right i'll have a look elsewhere but from the business point from our business point of view it it's also something to bear in mind is how desperate are you to sell yeah <laughs> You know. Well, another thing as well that people ask us about is the things like next day delivery and things like that, which again can can put you under pressure. Um, and then we'll have people asking us for you know sort of sorting out very specific things where they'll ask us, "Can you post it on this date so we can have it on this?" You know, it does get quite complicated. I mean, in ourselves, we sort of try to accommodate people as much as we can. Well, what, and one of the best things is that we get the messages: "Can you leave the." parcel in the porch under the flower pot that's right on the left hand side yeah as you look at the house under the green under the green <laughs> wheelbarrow by the wheelie bin yeah and i think you know I, I, I carve blood spoons i'm not supposed to i can carve it in a piece of wood for you but we don't actually deliver them <laughs> you know. but it's, it is amazing how specific some of the requests how, yeah. how they how they do how that sort of happens. But yeah, online sales, doing things like making different items out of wood for your, for your online shop, it, it does sort of open up an entirely different world of things that you need to organize. Getting back this spoon, now as you can see, as I'm carving this one out, it's just, I will probably come back over this one to tidy it up afterwards, going this way. So completely against your instinct, but I'm not getting a clean, I'm not getting a nice clean finish as I'm cutting here. I'm not getting a nice clean finish from it. So... Do you want me to sharpen the sugar up there? No, I think it's the nature of the grain. I think it's the nature of the grain there. So as I'm carving in that direction, it's chewing up just a little bit. I'll try a different gouge, see if that helps. Possibly. Possibly. As I'm getting deeper into the wood though, it doesn't seem as big an issue. Like I just feel it, yeah, it's improving. I'm taking smaller, smaller cuts. So as I'm taking thinner cuts, it's finishing a little bit better, but it naturally, the wood, the wood gives me the impression that it wants, wants me to work in this direction, in that area anyway, as opposed to going the other way. But that's the material, that's what you find. If you can feel that resistance, if something doesn't feel quite right in the way you're carving, then just swap it round, try it the other way. Shipping is always a consideration whether I'm buying or selling. Yeah, spot on. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, you've got to be careful as well. Always remember on things like eBay, you've got to be really careful when you're, when you're buying things, because sometimes you'll see, you'll see something, and you think, oh, that's a fantastic price. You think, well, that's a ridiculous price. And if you don't check the shipping correctly, you can end up paying absolutely ridiculous amounts. I've seen people with like hundred pounds for shipping and things yeah. like that on different products. So yeah, it is a it is a consideration. I mean, over the years with ourselves, with the online shop, I've always sort of stuck to that. I've, I've put the prices of the product up at different times and I put the post the the shipping to the US up by a pound um, but I've always tried to keep it below five pounds and below two pounds for for UK but it's not not a not straightforward and so I've always, and always a decision as well. One of the benchmarks for us is fifty pounds. Yeah. If it's so if it's if it's below fifty pounds, yet yeah, we send it out Royal Mail first class, and if it's above fifty pounds, we actually send it out using a courier because then it's tracked. Um, and it, again, we do different things. Sometimes people request specific things, and yeah, we we try to accommodate them as much as we can. It's a system that it's not foolproof, but it's worked. It's worked fairly well for us over the years, yeah. isn't it? 
we probably have about five or six inquiries now when we get off get get off here asking us where, where's my love spoon because unfortunately what we're talking about is actually the one thing that over the years has, has created a lot of frustration because it's the one thing that we can't actually control you know we can control it when it comes to the carving we can control it when it comes to lots of different aspects of it but we can't actually control when it comes to um, when it comes to the shipping and um, we've learned as we've gone along with that because we've improved our packaging because now for instance uh, I think we mentioned this last time about secure we've, we've, we have spoken about that a few times about you know how we've improved the packaging uh, free shipping on there oftentimes shows where the seller has already included it with the cost of the item yeah it's always good we educated buy on eBay absolutely I don't think I have ever bought anything from eBay ah well we we've in terms of stuff that we bought on eBay um, we've had yeah we've had all sorts of different things I've, I've, I've bid on different stuff that we've actually used for um, making items so I got I've got a video coming up on four items that we went on a on an auction bid We've had, we've had some useful stuff on there. We we bought a coronet saw on eBay, didn't we? Yeah. And we we've nearly bought things like band saws on there. Really useful if you can, because this is this is equipment. Some of the things that we bought on eBay, um, it, it, it's stuff that you just you wouldn't get anywhere. Uh, and then you'll sometimes find that like the coronet saw. When were they making those? Did probably forty years ago now, didn't they? Oh, nineteen fifties onward, I would thought. Yeah, and they probably stopped in about the seventies, didn't they? Yeah. The, yeah. So it's it's a it's a saw that you just wouldn't find anywhere other than on sites like eBay and something like a Facebook Marketplace. I mean, we've got here a, a very early Dewalt band saw. We got two of them, and again, we we came across one of those locally. Fantastic, fantastic band saws. Really, really well made. Because, I mean, the one, you've owned it over 30 years. Oh, easily. Yeah. Yeah, it's longer than 30 years. Getting on for 40 years now. And, uh, Jim, it can be a great place to find carving tools. Yeah, it is. It's um, Yeah, that's the other thing that we bought on eBay. If you put in vintage carving tools... Uh, that was that's been that was bought on eBay. That was bought on eBay. So it's it's a, it's a really good because what happens? See, a lot of people where they they'll inherit stuff, or if they're doing a house clearance, something like that, then they they can sort of acquire equipment, and for them it's of no use at all. But for ourselves as wood carvers, it's fantastic. I have noticed that. Uh, wood, for instance, I find ridiculously overpriced on eBay quite often. Um, but so I've never bought anything like that on there. But the uh, the tools we at, a, at different times we've bought quite a few tools on eBay, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, really useful to us. And I bought different things, um, different photography equipment. So most recently, I bought a light. From one of the camera camera companies in Cardiff, actually, so not far away from us. So you can see what we're doing. We're just beveling those edges again. I've got a little bit of darkening that's coming off on the gouge, so that's why I'm going back over it is to clean up where it's not giving me a perfectly clean finish. It's just it was so damp yesterday. I think that's coming off in the. Uh, on the gouges, I'm just going to clean it on my top, and then whatever we do to the one side, of course, we then do on the other side. Now the workshop, it continues to be busy. We're not having not having huge numbers of visitors, but we're um, we're sort of busy in other ways still. So we're still busy with bespoke spoons, and we're we're now looking to build up. Um, we build up our internet stock as we're uh, as we're going along. So again, now 
beveling the edges of the bells and hearts. Let's have a little look to finish that off. And then the, the main sort of bit left on this design, it'll be working on, on the flower. Not the easiest of woods, this one here, this particular, it's just this specific piece. Because of that slightly angled grain, it's just proving a little bit more demanding. So you can see around there is cutting better. You're going against your instincts in some ways because it's slightly diagonal. You're at certain points, you're having to go against your sort of instincts when it goes to carving. Well, you ask people as well, um, how are they getting on with this uh, COVID, coronavirus? How are they, no. have, they, have they been affected by traveling, for instance? You know, is it, is it sort of, um, are people sort of restricted in the way they can travel? Interesting to know. Yeah, has anybody had any uh, issues with traveling or anything? Because we we are currently trying to get Yolanda, my wife, her family. We're tr currently trying to um, sort out so they can come and see Yelly. She hasn't seen them for the last 20 months. And it's great in our country, in Wales, the people who are actually making the rules... They, they don't have to answer they any have, questions. They, so they don't even know... They don't know what, what the rules, rules are. They've made, which is incredible. Yeah, and we're we're doing our best to follow the rules, but unfortunately, the uh, the government that we have here, they, yeah, they're not exactly helpful. Even the people who work in for them even admit that. So it's very interesting. But we will. But don't tell anybody. We will keep trying to sort it out. We will keep trying to work on it because it's uh, yeah, Wales, a long time. Because Wales is different to England. Here we are. This is a, I did just pick up a block plane from a yard sale, 100 years old. Wow, two bucks, fantastic. I'm traveling, I'm watching, brilliant. Fantastic, wow, that's a good, uh, that's a good find. We've got, we've got a few different planes here. Always fascinating the different planes, different sizes and stuff like that. You've got a few block planes, you've got, we've got the compass plane, a few molding planes, um, what do they call the little ones, rabbit, do they call it a rabbit plane? Uh, rebate plane, I suppose, yeah. Rebate? Yeah. Thought the little one looked like a... Oh, a little bone nose one. Yeah. Yeah. And then we've got, there's one that we refer to as a granny's tooth, that's another plane that we've got there. And then we've got the old saw sets. All sorts. We, what it is, is over the years we sort of collected them and um, certain ones we still use, like the spoke shave every now and then, that gets called in to do a job. And um, But other ones then we just keep them and have them on display and use them for display purposes. So you can see we're just getting the petals done, the outer petals on our flower. And that's the idea, as I said, with this design. It's based on the idea that we hope love will blossom or continue to blossom. I was supposed to be on a sabbatical this year, postponed. We want to go to Europe. I think if you're going to Europe, um, now, if you've had the two vaccines, most of the countries in Europe, depending on where you're going, they, there's this um, certificate system. Um, and so what happens, you have a digital certificate to say that you've had the two vaccines and, and they're usually with most of the countries. So, for instance, I know that Spain is happy with that. Uh, in the UK, that's too sensible for them. They, they have to do other things. So it's too confusing to figure out. The only issue we had was the kids had to wear face masks to do petting. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, we've, um, again, face masks, different, different rules in different places here. So, um, I mean, I know, again, Spain, I only, Spain and the UK, I know. So UK, if you're indoors, it's face masks, not, out, not outdoors. And if you're in sort of, um, if you're in confined spaces, in close proximity to people, it's face masks. Uh, but there is, a, there there is, an, ex is, an, ex is an exemption for any form of professional sport, then you can do what you want. Yeah. You can go and have a big punch up, then you if, can have if, a big if you're fight. If a football fan, yeah. especially an English football fan, yeah. 
you can uh, you can kiss, you can hug, you can punch. Yeah, that's all legal. Uh, that's fine. And that's, yeah, in fact, I mean that goes seems to go. It's 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 it's, it's encouraged in some ways, isn't it? It seems to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, those things are all fine, but we're still struggling to be able to see Yelly's family. So there we go. But it's um, there we are. That's the world we live in. I just noticed a, a number of viewers have dropped. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. Oh dear me. <laughs> yeah, this is the mad world that we're living in. But yeah, we got we got um, we got the face mask, that sort of thing. But they're apparently the 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 story is 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 in England on the nineteenth. I think it is the nineteenth of July. It's it's all. All bets are off on that, and you can do what you want. But as we're saying, if it's a sporting event, you can do what you want anyway. That may actually end up. Is there relevance to our live stream? Of course, there is, because that may actually end up being a big part of what we do for our spoon to record this year. So I'm thinking we got some different ideas. Originally, this idea was Thomas the Woodcarver, so I'm, I'm blaming him for it. But when I spoke about it today, he completely forgotten about it. So it was him who originally said this well, idea. I'm 72, Dave. I do forget things. I know. But originally, it was Thomas the Woodcarver who came up with this idea, but it was me who remembered that he'd come up with this idea. So um, I'm thinking of a, either a double-sided spoon or maybe even a break from the tradition where we have um, two pieces of wood stuck together, something like that. Something different along those lines. Um, so, yeah. Well, it's recording the new religion, isn't it? That's it. But also, why double? Why a double? Why a double-sided spoon or a double two different pieces of wood? Could it be double standards? Double possibly? standards. Yeah. Double standards. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Double standards that we see, that we experience. The things that are going on. So there we are. That was basically what we were what we were looking at for for our spoon to to record this year. So we're putting that out there. So there is relevance to what we're saying. We always there's always a context, and there yeah. is always a. Yeah. It's all part of the. Uh, it's all part of the story. All part of the uh, things that we record. So you can see this is starting to really take shape now. I've got some sanding to do on. Um, especially on the bells, so we've really got to shape these, so get that nice and rounded off. I'm thinking as well that a lot of the different areas of the spoon, it's that nature of the grain. I'll ask, it was Dad who scroll sawed this one. Did you did you notice that at all when he marked this one out and, and scroll sawed it? You've got that slightly, excuse me, slightly diagonal grain. I, I did find that one, yeah. A, a, Bit of a, a challenging piece, piece of wood. Yeah, it, it was. It's sort of, um, uh, there were two spoons yeah. carved from the same piece of wood, if I remember rightly. Yeah. I can, I think were you, were you, when you were marking it out, were you sort of working around something? Um, a split or a knot or? I, I think I was, yeah. Quite often, see, because, you know, ideally you wouldn't be marking it out like this. But we don't, we don't live in a perfect world. We don't live in a, an ideal world, as we've been discussing. And so sometimes you have to be slightly adaptive in your approach. And so if you have to work a little bit diagonally, um, yeah, then you know we have to we have to still be able to get the best out of what we're doing. So what's, bring in something. What's, what's happened to the partner of that one then? I marked out two of those. Yeah, you've got two of these marked out. Oh. And and I think you the, oh. initially one oh. thing you were concerned of. You were concerned about the clapper uh, on the bell. That was one thing you were concerned about. There we are. Well, that's, that's some interesting. You can show everybody because they can see the... That's the other one. Oh, you've got the same thing. Out. But if you turn it over... A bit diagonal with you the... Turn it over, you can you see how, you know, how we try... When I say getting away with it. Yeah. <laughs> because... Um, well, we, we've, the, this is one of the difficulties with, with what we do. You can see on the back, you've got this almost a little bit of a set of two different colours. And the difficulty is this is going to be for internet stock. So if you have that, 
A lot of people will be really happy with it, but you only need one person who, who's not so keen on that yeah. and says, oh, this is too far away from the, the colour of the yeah. photo. So this is a difficulty that we have. We, we're usually having to work in quite clean, um, uniform yeah. timber. Yeah. Yeah. So it's got two, you've got two marks on it as well. Um, and uh, you, you've got... This was kiln dry. And so um, there is a little bit of um, sort of cracking on the side of it, I've got but I managed to I managed to get away. Uh, I'll be able to get that uh, cut out. Well, this is this is a big part of what we do, um, and some of you will know about this. You know, wood as a resource is undervalued, isn't it? Let's be honest about it. And it's quite often it's it's not. Um, it's not appreciated quite often, is it? And so ourselves, you know, we're, we're, we're running a business and this is another thing. When it comes to the environment and stuff like that, we don't like wasting anything, do we? We, no. we, we, like for instance, if you pass me over, see the two pieces I cut out yesterday? There we are. Now these were cut out for a project that I was doing for somebody. Uh, it was a sign for them. They're the two cutouts that we've done on the scroll saw. But for us, those are two quite substantial pieces of wood, nice pieces of teak. I'm going to use those for making other things in. You know, other, other people, that they, they would be off cuts. They'd be throwing those away. We'll, we'll find some use for that. We'll put them to good use and use them again. So that's something for ourselves. We make the best possible out of the resources available so we keep as much as much um, wood, we, we've got to try and get the best out of it. And that is what we're constantly doing, basically. So if we've got a piece of wood, we use as much of that piece of wood as possible. So I've got a few other little bits of wood here, a few little bits of olive wood. This one's got quite a few knots and stuff like that. That one's got a little bit of a, a split down there. But what I might do with those is to sort of stabilise stabilize those knots with some star bonds, super glue, um, some of the fast flow super glue to stabilize those. And I'll do some Christmas decorations with them. There's another little split there again, I'll stabilize all of that um, and, and use it for Christmas decorations or work around it. So it's just highlighting how we, we try to get the best out of whatever we're using. I've rescued many a piece of wood from a pile of firewood. Yeah, that's that's the thing is that, and a lot of what we have, especially like in Spain and things like that, where they don't have a lot of culture for things like wood carving so much, we've we've had all sorts of wood that has been destined to go on the fire. Things like, you know, beautiful cherry, olive woods, whole olive trees, where people have said, oh, I got, I've cut an olive tree down. And when I asked them, well, what would you use it for if you didn't give it to us? They, they say they'd use it for the barbecue, something like that. So we just, as you can see, we've shaped that one. I'll ask Dan if he's, have you got a piece of finer sandpaper? Finer sandpaper. It's just a, a finer piece, just to do a little bit more. So I've used, what it is, I'm using a P120 just to shape, just to shape these. Do you want a new piece? I, it doesn't need to be a new piece, it could be a worn piece, that's fine. In many ways, it's quite nice doing our more standard spoons as well, because it gives you, you know, when we're doing the bespoke spoons, so for instance, uh, I can't remember what we were demonstrating last week, but there are different spoons that I've been working on, something like this. Because I'm, I'm concentrating really quite hard on getting certain things right, and you're thinking about it more, it's... It, you can't get into a flow as much. I think that was the one actually I was working on last week to show everybody. I still got a bit of work on that on that rose that has uh, been a, a pardon upon a bit of a thorn in the side. Yeah. Um, so we got to, we've got to finish that one off. What's but the company that we get our sandpaper from though? Yeah. What? Well, at the moment, so, yeah. is it? At S the moment, we're getting it from. I mean, we get it from Axminster and things like that. But the company that you, the really good company that. Well, price wise people, yeah. say is it you you'll have to have a look on your S ipad s-a-i-c s-a-i-c really good company yeah you can get if you can get hold of them we've been having um for our belt sanders fantastic 
was walking through the park, it was walking through a parking lot this weekend, saw a piece of wood on the ground and was checking it out. Wife said, what are you doing? Oh, nothing, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, we've been there many a time. Checking through skips. People give you some funny looks when you're taking stuff out the skips. But it's amazing what you'll find, what people are throwing out. Uh, my uncle, outside a pub, he, uh, outside a pub, a bar, uh, whichever you refer to it as, he, he found a, a beach, a solid beach table. And he was fascinated then because he, he knew we wanted wood all the time. And so he was walking past, he went into the, he went into the, the bar and um, this isn't a joke, by the way, this is serious. Man walks into a bar. Um, he went into the bar and he, um, he asked them, can I have the table? And they said, well, it's in the skip, we don't want it. So if you want it, you can have it. And so he took it out, brought it to us. And he was fascinated then to think that what they were paying to get rid of, we were actually turning into love spoons that people were buying. So anything like that, it's, it's free wood, it's free materials. What do they call it? One man's, I do, I do the American, I would have thought in America, it would be one man's trash is another man's treasure. What we, call, what we call rubbish. It fits better in America, one man's trash. I think it's better than rubbish. I prefer that. One man's trash is another man's treasure. And that's what you find, all sorts that we've come across. We've even had like the um, some of the groups, some of the coach drivers, when they come in, they know we're always looking for wood. And we get phone calls saying, there's a skip down the road from you and they've got a solid table in there. Get up there before anybody else sees it. So now we've got a, a smoother finish on there. We've also got to just, where we've beveled the edges, we're going to smooth them off as well. So when we, when we demonstrate as well, this is the sort of thing that you're working on, is just taking off any of those rough edges, any of that rough, you know, because it's a, as well, because it's a little bit of a more difficult grain, some of the woods that carve better, it, it, it's, you'll get away with it. What's uh, it called? We got it from was S, capital S, capital A, capital I, capital C. Yeah. Um, Limited, Saic Limited. Saic Limited. And um, there we are. So if anyone's in the UK and they're looking, could, do they ship internationally? Because their prices, they're I'm undercutting, sure. they're undercutting the companies here. It's more than 50%, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, just, just imagine this. You've got... We were getting three and four sanding belts yeah. off them for the price yeah, that we yeah. pay for one. You've got, I mean, obviously you, you have to buy a quantity. Yeah. But in this instance, you've got... Um, Hermes aluminium oxide abrasive sanding belts, 150 by uh, 1,220. Um, grit 40, six pack. Yeah. 25.38. Yeah. So, so in effect, that's with well, the VAT, VAT as well, and, and, and obviously, because um, we buy a hundred pounds worth, um, you get free postage. You're, you're looking, um, what's that per sheet then? That's six, four, seven, four. Yeah, six. Five, five pounds a belt. Yeah. But we were having to pay 14 pounds a belt. We were paying 14 pounds for. Um, so, you know, that is definitely a big saving. And so it's less than, than half the price we were paying with the. And we buy, so we also buy the retailers. Blades, don't we, from them? No, I think we there was another company we got them from. Oh, a different company again. Again, yeah. yeah. But they as well. They were doing, they were doing standard sandpaper, but the problem was it was just a massive quantity. Yeah. So that's why we didn't end up buying it from them. But their prices, that's the only issue with them is that you have to buy a volume. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but definitely worth considering because their their prices are fantastic. Yeah. Really good. Well, I think these people supply some Basically, of the, yeah. You're going to... What you're doing is instead of... Like here, the, one of the big companies is Axminster. This is the company that supplies Axminster. So you're, you're cutting out that middleman. You're going direct to the supplier, which is uh, a big saving. So with this now, you can just see, again, just a not a, a straightforward... 
bit of grain that we're working on. One thing I also do on spoons like this one here, because it's a slightly larger love spoon, we don't do this on all of our spoons. We do it on as many as possible, but spoons over 50 pounds generally. We do a bit of carving on the back, so we just take off any sharp edges. Because the back of the spoon lays flat on the wall and you know it's not something that you generally expect people to worry about. We always finish it, so you'll see love spoons when you know sometimes people don't do anything with the back at all. We always finish it, we always shellac it, we always take out any saw marks and things like that because you will see them with all sorts of saw marks the whole lot. But we we don't we don't leave them like that. We like to still try and get a nice finish on them. But some of the smaller spoons then we won't take off as many of the edges as we do on the larger ones. <clears throat> well, I've actually seen some love spoons that have been made on, um, oh, what do you call it? Um, CNC? Yeah, there's somebody coming in there now. Um, oh, is there somebody coming to the workshop here? Two minutes. So we're just going to finish off, we're going to finish off working on this flower. Got that one there just to do a little bit of work on. There we are. There we are. So you're just going round the round the middle. There we are. So you can just see we're just working on that little bit of detail, working into the centre, just like so. And um, so that's good. So we're just working just around that centre. So it's the inside, inside petals that we're working on just to finish it off. And then I'll use the reverse angle. So we'll use the reverse angle of the gouge just to cut, just like so. There we are. The same again. Just working into that. Working into the centre, finishing off. One man's trash, another man's treasure. Yes, spot on. There we are. And that is how... I'll also show you, just very quickly, how we carve the back of the spoon. So we just finish off, just demonstrating. So turning it round in the vise. And I'm going to use it. It'll be a smaller gouge that we're using to just take off any sharper edges. So as I said, we don't do this on the full range. We don't worry about this on some of the uh, smaller designs, but on the larger spoons, we just take off any sharp edges. Yeah, I think so. So we work in, as we said again, work with that grain as much as possible. In some areas you're slightly going diagonally across. But if you need to, you can just turn it back around in the vise and carve back in the opposite direction. Hopefully, again, that gives you some ideas about the process that we use, the methods we use. If you've got any questions, let us know. Get that into us. And we'll, uh, we'll have a little look through. Um, but yeah, that's what we do with the spoons. There we are. So we're just finishing off. So we once we got to one, once we got and we finished all of the um, the detail going in the one way. I'm going to turn that round in the vise, and then we're going to carve it in the opposite direction. So you can see we've done all of that in the one direction. Flip it round in the vise, and it just takes off just takes off the sharp edges, and it's just finishing. Uh, Finishing off what we're doing. There we are. And we got a little bit, you can see there, just that's where it's just picked up a little bit of oil, possibly off my carving block or off the bench. So we just we just sand that back down. You can see there now again, 
as we had on the opposite side. It's, it's basically it's cutting into the wood too far, and so it'll have to be turned around and we'll be carving back the other way. Thank you for the positive feedback. Thank you. Glad you've been enjoying the, uh, the live stream today. So we're just going to cross there. Yeah, it's um, for me as well. It's good when I can concentrate on the, the live stream more where sometimes with the, um, like last week, my, because I was starting last week, I was starting working on that glow. And that can be a bit of a distraction then because you're trying to remember your method and trying to get a good idea for how you're going to go about, um, how you're actually going to go about the process of carving. And what happened last week as well, of course, for those of you who, uh, who weren't, weren't with us, I started carving it and realized that the method I was using was wrong. So these are the sorts of things that you're thinking through as you're doing the live stream. I realized halfway through that we had to change the method. There is one final carving job on this one. And that is to just work on the bowl. So interestingly again, on that little section there, it's carving better. You're basically carving a little bit against your instinct. So your instinct is to carve in the one direction, but in reality, it's carving better in the opposite direction. So this is one of the trickier bowls to work on. It may not actually work. It may flick out of the vise because it's difficult to grip. Um, but we'll see how we get on. And what it is, to start our bowl, we use the route and the template just to take out the bulk of the wood. And then afterwards, we hand carve it all, all in. So we're just doing a little bit of detail. It's just to take off where that router cuts, it, it burns, it scuffs, that sort of thing. So we can then tidy it all up using the hand gouges. And then afterwards, we can hand sand it and then hand finish it. So that's the, that's the process for, for actually doing a bowl on a love spoon. Let's see if we can just finish one off for you all to see. And we've got a few people in the shop there, so Thomas Woodcarver's just busy with them a, a moment. If he does come back before the end of the stream, I can put a coat of shellac on there for C, so you can see how that comes up. This you can see just as I'm trying to squeeze that in the vise, yet yeah, we're just about holding, just about holding. And then just tidying that, tidying that all up, just cleaning that up. So yeah, just taking off any little marks. And just see that, you grab me some shellac. Yeah, great. There we go. So just tidying that all up, just taking off any of those little bits that are left over, carving the, there there's just a little scuff where we've gone against the grain. It's a useful method using the router and the template. What it does, I've mentioned it a few times before, it just reduces the amount of pushing that you're doing in the sort of initial preparation. So it just allows us just allows us just a little advantage. Um, you know, any savings, all of yourselves, I know are wood carvers, so you know how much pushing is involved in doing wood carving. Any little savings that you can make, I always sort of think you're planning, you've got to be planning for your future as a wood carver and any little savings that can be made in terms of physical, you'll be thankful of later on. Am I right, Thomas Woodcarver? I'm afraid so. You know, things like using the router just reduces a little bit of the pushing, doesn't it? And so... I'm okay for the morning. The afternoon's just to go finish me off. You did it, you, you had a fantastic day, didn't you, last week? Yeah. The one day, you had a really good day, and he was, he was absolutely flying with the... With this the... Um, active, aren't I? With the scroll saw, yeah. you were doing a fantastic job with it. He produced all sorts on this one day, and then the next day you couldn't move. No. He was really struggling the next day then. 
from us. That's We're back what for our wonderful climate again. Yeah. Although today I'm finding it quite warm. Yeah, oh yeah, it's warm. Well, they, they, they did give me my second vaccine, so that but slowed me uh, down. Um, is it warm? Because I don't know, my body temperature oh, regulating is... definitely warmer than it was yesterday. My, my, I'm well, a bit all over the place. I mean, it's, it's what, what is it, the 10th of July today? Uh, hang on, I'll check now for you. Today it is the 12th. The 12th. And the last... Work smart and not harder, spot on. I That's why we recommended that scroll saw to you, see? Sunday, I actually put the heating back on. Yeah. Yeah, and our heating comes on automatically, and it has been doing so on several occasions. So you can see we just tidied that bowl up, and let's put let's put a little bit of shellac on the just on the face for you all to see. I reckon this is going to be one of those pieces of wood that'll really you'll really see the character. What do you reckon? What do you reckon, Dad? I reckon you'll really see the character of the grain oh, yeah, coming out on that. Be nice. You'll see all the. And it is a little bit. This is the uh, this is the best bit. Look at that. Nice bit of character. Nice bit of grain on there. You start to see all that medullary ray. Oof. There we go. Look at that one there. Beautiful golden coloured oak. Fantastic. I'm gonna move it further in the vice. I'm gonna do the rest of the. I'm gonna do the rest of the face. I won't do the bowl because I got to hand sand that one, but I got to do this bit here because that is just a beautiful bit of grain. There you go. And that is the nice thing about flowers it. for my sweetheart. That spoon. You got to do the spoon as well. I can't because I haven't sanded it. Oh, that's a shame. But you still you, I can, I'll still do it. I'll still do it. Here we go. Well, whilst Thomas Woodcarver, he's got something to explain there. Well, it's nice, isn't it? Because you can brag about that piece of wood and you're not bragging about yourself. No, you're, absolutely You're bragging not. about the actual character in the wood. Well, this is another Although thing as well. We can sort of say, look at that, but it's not nothing to do with us. It's nothing to do with us. But I think this is another philosophy that we keep in our work. Um, we, never, we never worry, when it comes to the carving, like the carver's job is to, how can I say, is to present that material the, the best we can then, isn't it? It's, it's not, you never have to, as a carver, I think the nice thing as a carver, you never really have to take centre stage, do you? you do you understand what I'm saying? Because... Well, no, centre stage here, I'm working now on the piece of wood that you worked on last week. Right. And it's Burmese teak, and it's just a pleasure yeah. to, I'm working on the back side of it. Yeah. And, and it's, it's just a pleasure to work with. But because, of, because it's such a nice material, and because the material itself is so beautiful, that's, that's how we see our carving, that's how we see our relationship then with wood, is bringing out the natural beauty that it has. That's why we, we tend to keep things simple and we tell stories through what we do but we don't you know we don't worry about a lot of things because it's such a great material that ultimately whatever you do with it the material itself remains more beautiful than what you can do with it i know you're not going to thank me for this now but i i, I just it's just going through my mind now about the we, we talked about the football earlier oh here we go and imagine now, right? That's two people have turned off. Yeah, I'm carving now, right? Right. I'm, you know, I'm carving now as the football player would. And I'm going, oh, look at that. Oh, look, look the chisel. Oh, look what it's done. Oh, don't tell me that now. Oh, look at the chisel's done. Ah, oh, it's taken that bit of wood out. Oh, come on. You know? Are you turning into an aggressive carver? Yeah, you imagine, you know, but that's that's your that's your job, like you know. Ah, yeah. oh. there we go. <laughs> so Thomas Woodcarver, he's going to continue his his rant about the football in private. Ah, oh, <laughs> look at this. Oh. And that is how we carve a flowers.
for my sweet tart love spoon. Hopefully it's useful. Um, as always, we'll be back all going well. We will be back next week with another live stream. We'll have another upload uh, midweek. Any questions, anything you want to know, um, yeah, get it into us. We'd be delighted to help out in any way we can. Oh no, my wife hasn't brought me a cup of tea in. Oh, oh, oh now, no. now, now to, to, <laughs> to coin another sporting phrase, now he's on what they call in cricket, a very sticky wicket, <laughs> which is, for anybody who doesn't know, very dangerous ground. And I'm sitting here now, and I was just about to finish the live stream, and I can't leave it like this, because look at that. Can you see what I've done? And I do this sort of thing, and I, we go and finish it, and nobody else notices. And then afterwards, I go to put initials on and realise that I've missed a cut. Yeah? Yeah. Who can spot the cut? There you go, I can't finish the live stream. Who can spot the cut that I've missed? Who's going to spot it first? I've missed one cut. Can't leave it like that. Oh, it's the top of the... Well, shall I say? There we are. See, if you get in first, you get in first. I, I've seen it, yeah. There we are. Thomas Woodcarver spotted it. Yeah. There we go. She was, she was spotted. See, anyone going to... You're going to get it. Anybody get it before we say? I've missed one cut. I was accidentally pointing at it, if you were quick enough to see. Well, sh how, how long should we give this? We give it another... I give it until the clock changes from 45 to 46. Well, it's extra time now. Extra time, now we're going to penalties. Yeah, it's extra time. I gotta say, as well, before we do so, when, when you're on the spot, I gotta say, fair play to that lad. Was it Bell Clapper? No, try again. I gotta say, as well, one thing I gotta say on the football that lad, the boy who they sent up England to take that last penalty, fair play to him going and taking that penalty. 19 years old, good on him, good on him, fair yeah. play to him. Those, and the, and the two that went on, in it, it, they were sent on in the last minute of extra time to take penalties, good on them, fair play to them. They stood up and took those penalties, good on them. I don't blame anyone for missing a penalty. Yeah. Uh, my, my, my advice on taking penalties is terrible anyway. I just used to blast it as hard as I could. But fair play to them, yeah, you got it. The pickpocket turned up and got it. <laughs> Brilliant name. Pickpocket came straight in there. Pick the pocket of everybody. You spotted it. Top of the heart. There you go. Spot on. That is a pickpocket. Well, fair play. <laughs> yeah, top of the heart. I've missed one cut there. Yeah, back. I thought, yeah, fair play to those three. The two that came on took a penalty. Yeah, fair dues to you. you yeah, you missed, but... You stood up and you did it, and that boy, 19 years old, and taking the biggest pressure penalty. Boy's a hero, fair play to him. Everyone can, everyone, that can happen to anyone. Anyone can get, stand there and miss a penalty. That's one of those things. He was up against a giant of a goalkeeper. And um, there we go, it didn't go his way, but fair dues to him, he stood up and he did it. I take my hat off to your son. Top right heart. Yeah, you got it now as well. Spotted it set on on the second go. You were you were the the pickpocket came in first though and caught everyone out there. There you go. And a little bit of shellac just on. Oh, I put too much on now just to even it even up. Oh, that's. I put way too much shellac on there. It's running everywhere. I got I got chippings and everything. So there we go. That's my job for the next ten minutes. Is sorting out where I put too much shellac on. There we go. Thank you all for joining us. Hope it was interesting. Great fun for us as well to have you all with us. So we really appreciate that. Makes the live stream much more interesting for ourselves and hopefully for yourselves too. We'll be back again. As I said, Wednesday we'll have our video upload and then we'll have um, our live stream all going well next Wednesday. Yohida! Yohida!